Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, a bit of a mix of different things going on. Uh, we're going to have a catch up just what we've been doing over the last number of weeks because we've no videos up. So we'll catch up on that. Uh, we're also, it's a dull wet old day. So pull the diet feeder up and we're going to do a bit of, do a bit of getting ready on it for, uh, for the winter. Has to get a bit of a wash, tidied out. Uh, it's actually full of water on the inside, which I will show you now. So you can see it in there, full of water. Uh, there's probably bits of silage and stuff in there in the middle of it all too. So uh, yeah, we'll take pop the the there's a, a bung on the bottom, but we'll take that off a big cap. Uh, we let all the water out of it, give it a quick wash out on the inside as well, and just kind of get it ready for for use in the winter time. We we'll maybe grease it up as well. There's a few grease points on it. Just make sure the chain's well oiled, and as I say, get it ready to go because a good bit of rain over the last week or so, and. Ground starting to get cut up a little bit, so it's not been long till we have cattle in. So that's the first thing we're going to do is get the power hose going and get it with a bit of a wash down. All right, so feeder is all washed down. I didn't bother uh, filming the whole washing process because, well, it's not something that you haven't already seen before. Uh, but yeah, nicely washed down. Uh, we took the, the plate off the bag that allows uh, the fluid or whatever, water or whatever's in it to go out. The hole also allows you to wash everything out and get it out uh, onto the ground. So we got that done. Um, cleaned all around the elevator as well. So that's all cleaned up. Uh, and all that's left now to do on it is the bit of greasing so there's only like i think there might be 10 bearings on it all together four of which are very easily got here on the the elevator so there's two this side two then corresponding ones the far side uh, there is one large main bearing here uh, which very easy to grease just when it's running uh, same then corresponding bearing on this side there is two then on the the sprocket or either side of the sprocket that uh, where the drive is off the the drive shaft uh, and then there's two more then on a on uh, well it's it's the in-between sprocket there's a, a massive big sprocket on it a small one out here that's drive off the at the pto shaft and then there's another one here as well so yeah so it's not it's not that much 10 bearings easy to grease easy maintenance on it uh, and then two grease points then on the on the PTO shaft. So yeah, that's it. But I'll not grease it till I have it on the tractor. I'll wait till it's hooked on to the 2850 and I can just put it going slowly and then pop a bit of grease in while it's moving uh, safely. So yeah, that's that. More or less ready to go. Uh, bought a few cattle. I'll show you them. They're just starting to, to make some purchases uh, at the minute. So we'll show you them now next. The other thing that's going on as well, just before we look at the cattle, is we are uh, just getting prepped on here in the cattle sheds. Uh, one of them here fully washed out, uh, done and dusted. I did a bit of it last week. Peter then, because I've done a few days, I've finished it out, made a really good job of it. So, yeah, uh, nice job. And it's another step on the way to just having it done. It's nice to have it all cleaned out, feeding boxes all spotless, uh, you know, all galvanized washed uh, at the sides just if you get it galvanized get the galvanized clean it's surprising how bright the shed is just it it goes in a dark color when the cattle's in there over the over the winter and you get it all cleaned out there's a lovely reflection of it and it just brightens the whole shed up so yeah great to have this shed done another shed to do it's been started now 
uh, hopefully tomorrow I think and we'll get that done within the next week see we've four bales of hay here we got the last of the hay made about two weeks ago in that warm swell didn't do any video on any of it because we're just busy on the pressure and I did not bother with getting the camera out but uh, weather was good got a lot of it made few bits of it around headlands or just along ditches or if it was sheltered areas in the field the bales just weren't 100% uh, fit, they heated a little bit so uh, there's four of them here that, that heated there's another few in the in the in the cow shed as well so we'll just keep them to one side they should settle down so usually they'll heat away a wee bit and then come back settle down and we'll use them at some stage then ourselves we'll not sell them out to any customers we'll use them up and uh, they'll they'll go for uh, go, go for feeding the cows um it, the other thing too as you don't see too often in the yard it's here since last week uh, in New Holland with uh, a saw on it. Now it's a T7, T7 so not really up to speed on the New Hollands but uh, I'm sure it's pretty much the same size as the 215 horsepower wise I would think. Uh, it just doesn't look as big in in appearance but uh, I don't know what year it is it's a uh, Northern Ireland tractor, so we can't just see uh, exactly what year it is. But yeah, nice machine. Uh, it's got a lovely, quickie loader on it. Doesn't look that old. Uh, it's well covered up. Plenty of guards on it, um, and uh, yeah, plenty of safety guards, which is a good job and something that you need for uh, when you're cutting hedges. Uh, it's actually be hired into the the ESB. You can see the the sticker on the tail. But yeah, fine machine, fine outfit. Um, and when they're in the area, a lot of times they'll be in the area a couple of times a year and they just stop off for the fastest. Is it okay if they park the tractor here for a few days? So it's never a problem. So it's safe enough here anyway. So that is it. New Holland T7 210. Probably the only time you'll ever see one of them in the yard. Alright, so as I said, we've started purchasing some of our cattle, our finishing cattle for the, the coming winter. Uh, these are the first animals that come. Batch of, nice batch of black bullocks. Uh, some of them are Am Aberdeen Angus on the cards. Um, not easy buying the cattle this year. They are a strong, strong price. Very strong price. Uh, now whether they come back a little bit or not, that's just debatable at the minute. Uh, this weather keeps up, there might be more cattle coming out, flushed out into the sales and the price might come back a little bit. So we'll just have to see over the coming weeks what happens, but they're a strong price. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh, this year we are buying, we have enough heifers that will do us for the winter. We're going to buy bullocks and mostly bulls that we have to purchase in. We have a good few bulls as well already that were out on grass. So yeah, mix of bullocks and bulls is what we're aiming to, to purchase, uh, just to, to try and fill up uh, what space is left. Um, yeah, it's a nice, nice batch of, of bulls. They're, they're going to stay here, or bullocks, sorry, they're going to stay here in this pen until they just settle out. Uh, they're getting some hay at the minute, we've been a, we're getting a wee bit of barley as well. They're just starting to get uh, up to speed on that. And then once they're settled, we will put them down into uh, one of the, the newer sheds down the bottom and uh, yeah, just get them sorted. They've got some vaccinations and got sorted with all that stuff. So they'll get a, a, they'll get a number of days here until, really until, we'll probably leave them here until uh, we've more cattle coming in and we need the space. So uh, there's one guy here over on his own. He, just a wee bit of a lameness. So he's just in there just that no one's jumping on him or annoying him. He's not too bad, he's fine, but uh, just to be on the safe side, we put them in there. Uh, and then these, there's a batch of bulls that come earlier on. Uh, and yeah, six nice Charlie, uh, Charlie bulls. And uh, yeah, they're just at a nice stage now uh, where they'll just get them settled and we'll get them into the, as I say, one of the bottom sheds and get them in and up on feed as well. So. Uh, again, like the other ones, these have just been vaccinated, um, warmed vaccinated, and they're on hay at the minute, just to, 
just to get them settled. And they'll get in the bottom shed as well, into a different pen, obviously, in the bullocks. Uh, but yeah, so what we're going to do is now, we are going to, they've been on here at the minute, we're going to get some bales of silage. So I'll take you along whilst we're going to get the bales and uh, we'll open them and see what they're like. We might feed maybe some of the, the, the February silage that we cut very much earlier in the year. So we'll see, see what we get home. All right, so we're going to get these bales. Uh, just said I put the camera on on the way down and uh, just tell you what all we've been getting up to over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had that dry week when the kids went back to school. The weather, as it does, always picks up for that week or so. Uh, and it just allowed us to get the hay done and dusted. We had it was close on 30 acres of hay that was left to cut. We got it made. As I said, the, the quality or the, the actual hay itself was pretty in pretty good shape when we were bailing it. Uh, just a couple of sheltered spots that we just had mm -hmm. to be careful with those bales and we kept them for ourselves. Uh, so that was that finished with. Uh, the other thing that we uh, also got done was we had spring barley, which we got cut that same week. Um, it was about 10 acres of spring barley that we had planted and then the bit of re stuff as well and it was cut and uh, done and dusted. Um, yields again well back on what they usually would be every other year. Uh, something between I'd say about two and a quarter ton to the acre is what it averaged. Uh, but again just to get it done and dusted out of the way wasn't too bad. Uh, the sun then as well and heat played into getting the straw bailed up and getting that all finished with so yeah got that on and dusted straw gathered up and uh, yeah so th those few bits and pieces were all sorted out and the problem I see now going over the last week or so is that we've had a lot of rain and we're getting back into almost the same stage it's not just as bad yet but if this weather keeps up for another, for the, the rest of this week, or another week or so, we're going to be in the same position as we were last year, where the ground is going to be too wet, or, or getting into the point where it's too wet to so, so, we'll see. We're not panicked yet, there's still plenty of time, but some of that ground we have is quite low-lying, it's damp, it's wet, and you need conditions to be pretty good to get it sown. And we're not going to be going back in like the way it was last year. Last year was touch and go, it was puddles, it was wet areas in it. And just like that again, we'll have to go back in. So we'll see what happens weather wise. Really and truly, we need a good. What we need is we'd like to. We got the dome drew into position last Friday, and the plan would be to start ploughing at some stage later this week. <coughs> and maybe get a bit of drilling done then early next week in that damper ground. That's what we were hoping to have it in and have it in a wee bit earlier than last year and maybe just get it in in better conditions. But this rain is gonna is just kind of hampering the, that plan. So we'll see what it does. Uh, but if it looks like it's gonna be too wet, it'll be abandoned the next year we'll put a spring drop on it. It's not going to be like last year. We might even put some maize silage in some of it. Uh, for next year, we'll see. Uh, ne next springtime, we'll see see what way it works out. Uh, so that's kind of it's kind of where we're at. I uh, hope anybody that's going to the ploughing this week uh, has a good week. I haven't been at it in six or seven years, maybe eight years, and every year I say I must go next year, but I just never seem to get around to going. So we'll see. Maybe next year, uh, but definitely if you're going to it. You're going to need wellies. We've had a lot of rain today. The day was the first day, but I've seen some clips where the place is flooded down there and it's just a lot of muck. So you need your wellies, you need coats. Uh, I think there's more rain coming tonight, but I think for tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, the weather might be a little bit better. So please God it is and that uh, everybody has a good time down there. So just pull into the field here now and we'll start to load up these bales.
we've got them loaded up see we've a lovely bit of cold cut silage coming on here which we would hope to cut uh, in the next week or so if a bit of dry weather comes so we'll see it was slurried back about it's probably about five six weeks ago that's all i got so it's just a nice order there now if you get a wee bit of dry weather we'll mow it down and get it built up if i just see here as we're cruising past look out the other river filling up and just starting to come out into the field I'll tell you how much rain has fell today and over the last few days. Right, so first bale is in and not too bad at all it's opened up lovely smell of it and looks quite nice uh, this is the february cut silage that everyone said the wooden ferment has fermented absolutely perfectly uh, yes feed quality wouldn't be great but it'll do all right for uh, there's not that many bales of it I've seen what's over there a lot of them are used we used a good few of them during the, the early part of the summer on the cows and i'd say there's about maybe 15 left so they'll disappear fairly quick especially when the bulls come in which i don't think is going to be too long the way this weather's shaping up so yeah we're going to be feeding cattle inside very very soon so that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed it we'll be back at the weekend with another video don't forget if you haven't already subscribe to the channel hit the sub button leave a like on the video comment down below if you have any questions thanks for watching see you at the weekend <laughs>